Honestly, I can't recommend these microphones enough. They're absolute workhorses. We bought these over four years ago. It cost around 50 bucks and they sound absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name's Ben, we are The Beard Guys, and here is our guide on how you can get your microphone sounding professional without breaking the bank. I want to show you how by using sensible microphone choice, intelligent use of your space, and also by setting up some clever filters in OBS Studio that you can make your voice sound crisp and clear without spending a ton of money on a silly microphone. I'm gonna cover a few topics today regarding microphone audio for streaming. So I'll put the time codes up on the screen. If you wanna to skip to a particular part of the video that interests you most, then you can do that. If you do find it useful, then please think about clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. Now, I've always taken great pride in audio on our channel. It's what I studied at university, both at undergraduate and postgraduate level, and it's one of the few things from university that I've been able to use now in my full-time job as a content creator and a live streamer on Twitch. Poor quality microphone audio for me is one of the biggest turnoffs when I'm checking out a new streamer and it's surprisingly common. And there's two reasons I find it frustrating. One is because it's quite unpleasant to listen to and two, because it's actually quite easy to fix unless you're in a really, really bad, noisy space for streaming. I think it's completely false that you need to spend a load of money on a fancy microphone or other fancy equipment to make your microphone sound nice on stream. You just need to spend a little bit of time doing some research, playing with some settings to get everything set up just right. And hopefully with this video, I'm gonna walk you through that process. The microphone that I'm recording this video on cost me about 45 pounds, that's about $55. And the audio interface that it plugs into was about 80 quid, so that's about 100 bucks. We bought all this kit over four years ago and it's done as well through thousands of YouTube videos, thousands of hours of live streaming, and it's still going strong. And if you think 150 bucks is too much to spend, then even when we first started up our YouTube channel nearly six years ago, we used a very cheap USB microphone that is about $60 and that served us just fine for the first year or so we made content. I would really love to do some microphone comparison videos for you all, so if there's any that you would like to see in particular, then leave a comment down below saying which ones you'd like me to test, and if we can get, say, a thousand likes on this video, then I'll go out and buy a couple of them and I'll put up a comparison video so you can see the results of that. Also, if you wanna ask me any other questions about this video, leave them down below, or better yet, jump over to our Twitch stream where we stream every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday over on twitch.tv slash thebeardguys. So let's get cracking with how you can get your microphone audio sounding top notch in OBS. For this video, I'm using my Samson CO1 condenser microphone. This runs via XLR cable into an audio interface which is an M Audio M Track 2 Plus which then runs via USB into my PC. I'll put some Amazon links down below of all the equipment I mention and use in this video. So if you do wanna go and check it out, you can see it there. I'll also put our full kit list so you can go and see the whole streaming setup that we use uh, over on kit.co as well. You can use USB microphones for recording or streaming. Like I said, that's what we did when we first started doing the channel and there's some much better ones out there now than what we used five or six years ago. They can do a pretty respectable job and it removes the need to have an audio interface or a mixer, which is what you're gonna need if you buy an XLR microphone like this. Samson actually do a USB version of this microphone that I really wanna try out, but it's a bit overpriced at the moment because of all the Corona stuff, so I'm just waiting for prices to get more sensible, and then I'd quite like to buy one and test it side by side, and just see how it holds up against the Samson XLR uh, condenser microphone. Honestly, I can't recommend these microphones enough. They're absolute workhorses. We bought these over four years ago, 
it costs around 50 bucks and they sound absolutely brilliant. You see streamers out there with three, $400 microphones and they don't sound any better than this and sometimes they sound worse. If you are willing to spend 150 bucks or more on your microphone audio, then I definitely recommend going down the XLR condenser microphone route rather than spending $150 plus on a USB mic. I think you get better sound quality and it just gives you a bit more flexibility in what you can do with your audio channels if you ever wanna change anything in your setup or make things a little bit more complicated. Now, before we jump into setting up your audio filters in OBS Studio, it's worth covering a couple of basic points about how to use microphones and how to set up your space appropriately to get the best out of them. Firstly, the space you are in makes a big difference. The further away you are from your microphone, the more background noise there is, and the more echoey the space you're in can all have a big impact on the overall sound quality. You can use filters in OBS to try and battle against these but the cleaner your original sound the easier it's going to be to get a better quality audio signal out the other end. Condenser microphones like this one are generally meant to be right up in front of your face and it's often what you see get used in recording studios. Keep in mind they usually have a specific direction and pattern in which they pick up audio so it's worth looking into what your particular microphone does and then making sure your microphone is facing the right direction. Most condenser microphones pick up audio from one of the flat faces in a sort of 45 degree pattern coming out the front. They don't tend to pick up the audio from here, so don't talk into that bit unless you know that's where your microphone works. If you want to find a microphone that you can have further away from your face, if you think this gets in the way, you can try using a shotgun microphone they do tend to work better at being slightly further away. They have a much narrower pattern of audio pickup than a condenser microphone generally. But keep in mind small movements or turns of your head could have quite a significant impact on the audio and I'd probably just recommend using shotgun mics maybe for recording for YouTube rather than streaming where you're more likely to be a bit more active and moving around and that kind of thing. I just use a condenser mic, but I am considering getting a shotgun mic for recording something like this so I can have my microphone uh, a little bit out of shot rather than sitting right in front of me. Keeping your microphone nice and close into your face is usually pretty handy. It means you can have the input gain for the microphone down low and by having it down low, it's gonna pick up just your voice and as little background noise as possible. If you move the microphone far away and then have to turn up the gain to be able to pick up your voice, then it's also going to pick up lots more background noise. It's going to pick up your keyboard. It's going to pick up you breathing or drinking or cars driving past. So you've got to keep this in mind when positioning your microphone. The further you move it away from your mouth, the more you are going to compromise on quality. The trick is in finding the right balance between audio input level, the distance between you and the microphone, and how you configure your filters in OBS. One more trick to mention before we jump into the OBS filters is how to set up your room to improve it for recording. Assuming you've already reduced as much background noise as you can, then there are other things you can do to improve the quality of sound in that space. Assuming you've already turned off all the noisy background sounds that you can, it can really help you out if you can make your recording space a lot more dead sounding. What I mean by sounding dead is that there isn't much echo. You know how if you've ever been in a recording studio or a professional recording space, they tend to have a lot of soft things on the walls. Recording studios have acoustic foam everywhere. They have it on the roof. They have it on the walls. And when you click your fingers or you speak, you notice that there's just not much echo going on. It sounds very, very dead in that room. Whereas if you're in a big hall or even just in your living room and it has wooden floors and big hard walls, when you click your fingers or talk, you can hear that echoing. This can make audio sound really naff when you're recording into a microphone as the audio signals are bouncing back and coming back into the microphone multiple times because of that echo. What you can do to help this is as well as trying to be in a space that is relatively small where possible 
or has some soft furnishings in it, you can also use acoustic foam yourself. It's pretty cheap to buy. Uh, you don't need to cover all of your walls with it, but just a few panels of foam up on the wall in front of you can really make a big difference. If the space you use to stream in or record in is a temporary setup or the wife isn't gonna let you stick a load of foam on the wall, you could maybe get some foam panels and attach them to some sort of backboard that you could then just hang up temporarily uh, by a nail or a peg on the wall when you're recording and then just take it down and hide it in the shed when you're not using it. Now we're on to the OBS side of things. There are a few basics we need to run through and then a couple more slightly complex areas to cover where I would explain two key audio filters that will make your microphone quality a ton better. First up, the most basic step is just checking you have the right audio device selected. We can check that by going into settings and then audio and checking the mic input is the correct one. In this case, the device is my M-Track Plus, which is the USB audio interface that my microphone is plugged into. If you're not using any other mics to record into OBS, then all the other slots should be disabled. Now the first step to setting up your microphone is by setting its initial input level. There are several ways to do this. First up, go to your sound control panel, then visit the recording tab and find the input device you are using. Right click it and go to properties and then levels and you will see this bar. This allows you to control the input level that your PC is picking up audio from your microphone. Because I'm using an XLR microphone via my audio interface, I can control the gain of my microphone on the interface itself, which means I can leave this setting at 100 and control it via the hardware I've got down here. If you are using a USB microphone, you will probably find that having this at 100 is going to be too high and your audio is going to be peaking out and hitting the red too much. The next place you can tweak some settings is back in OBS. So by clicking the cog next to your audio sources down here and selecting advanced audio properties, you can then adjust the volume of the mic up and down as well as choosing between mono and stereo and assigning audio sources to different tracks. Generally, I would recommend setting your initial volume just using the sound control panel shown in the previous step or the microphone input levels on your mixer or audio interface if you're using a XLR setup. We can make the audio louder or quieter in much more effective ways by using some clever OBS filters, which we will now jump into. So I have two filters that I mostly use and these these are a noise gate and a compressor. These filters do two key things and it's worth noting that they do them in a very specific order. Firstly, we use a noise gate to stop the microphone actually picking up audio when it goes below a certain volume threshold. The purpose of this is to reduce background noise such as typing on your keyboard, or drinking or heavy breathing or using a gaming controller. Any background noise that you don't want coming through on your stream, the noise gate is there to try and block that out. You can think in terms of the noise gate as either being closed or open. If it's closed, then there's no sound at all coming through your microphone channel. And if it's open, then there'll be sound coming through. So if you're typing louder on your keyboard whilst you're talking, then your voice will keep the noise gate open so you will still hear the keyboard sounds. But if you configure it correctly, if you type on the keyboard and you're not talking into your microphone, then you shouldn't hear the keyboard sounds come through. By removing as many of these unwanted sounds as we can at this point, this sets us up to effectively use the second of the filters, the compressor. What the compressor is doing is taking the quiet parts of the microphone audio and making them louder and it also takes the loud parts of the audio and makes them quieter. This allows you to have your voice come through on stream or your recordings at a fairly constant volume, helping to boost up the level if you're speaking more quietly or have your head moved away slightly from the microphone, as well as dropping the volume down if you get a bit excited and start shouting or speaking more loudly than normal. This gives a much more pleasant and listening experience to your audience and is relatively simple to set up, which I'll explain in just a moment. The reason it's important to have the noise gate before your compressor is that if you don't remove some of those background sounds before it hits the compressor, the compressor may try to bring the volume up of some of the quieter background 
background sounds that you don't want there in the first place. So let's take a bit of a deeper look at the settings on these two filters so you can get them set up correctly. On your noise gate, the open threshold is the volume at which the audio signal needs to be in order for the microphone to be active. So the higher you move this slider up, the more background noise you will block out, but you can also risk blocking out your own voice if it goes too high. This is really the key setting here. The close threshold is generally safe just to set five to 10 decibels below your open threshold and the attack, hold and release times you can play around with if you wish. Different people recommend different approaches, but something vaguely like what I have here that is fairly low should do you just fine. To get your open threshold set just just right, make sure you have your microphone input in Windows or on your external audio interface both set how you want them as well as also having your microphone positioned just how it will be when you are recording or streaming. Talk into the mic ranging from as quiet as you think your voice will go up to your normal speaking volume and move the open threshold slider up and down until you can see OBS picking up signal clearly for all the sounds you make you wish to be picked up. I usually then make a few quieter noises that I wouldn't want picked up such as breathing, typing on my keyboard, or using my Xbox controller and then if you can still see OBS picking up an audio signal for these noises move the slider up a bit until these sounds are not activating the microphone. The goal here is for you to find the right sweet spot where none of your voice is getting clipped off by the noise gate but as little as possible background noise is coming through. Keep in mind that your settings here will be different depending on your setup and the input levels you use as well as the volume you talk at so copying someone else's settings will always require some tweaking. Just spend some time playing around and testing it and make some test recordings and listen back to them. You can also go to your advanced audio properties and monitor the channel live if you want to hear it without recording it. Once your noise gate is set up correctly, you can then set up your compressor. You'll need to tweak a few more settings than you did for the noise gate on this one, so let's briefly run through what they all do. The ratio is the amount of volume reduction that will be applied to the loud parts of the audio that you want to reduce the volume of. The greater the value, the stronger the compression effect. As for threshold, this is the volume at which when your signal reaches this level or goes over it, the compression effect set in the ratio field will be applied. So anything over this volume will have its volume reduced. So for example, if my audio input goes over minus 15 dBs, which is about halfway through the yellow bar down at the bottom of OBS, then that audio will be reduced by a ratio of five to one. The attack and release fields indicate how quickly the compressor comes into effect and how quickly it disables again when it is not needed. You want these set relatively low and probably won't need much tweaking beyond that. The final field we are going to look at is the output gain. The threshold and ratio control making loud noises more quiet and the output gain controls making the quiet noises more loud. This will increase the gain of your audio signal balancing out any sounds that the compressor may have made too quiet. Your aim here is to tweak these settings until your voice is consistently coming through in the yellow area of the volume meter down at the bottom of OBS. Green is a bit quiet, red is going a bit loud, and yellow is just right. A little bit each way doesn't matter too much, but if it's always green, then it needs to come up. And if you're hitting the max of red, then you need to bring it down a touch. The best way to get these settings just right is by testing, testing, testing. Keep adjusting them and making test recordings using the method mentioned earlier and listen back to these until you feel you have things just right. Then once you've done a stream with these settings, go back, listen to some of that, see if it sounds good, if not, give it a tweak and try again. Getting your audio sounding just right on stream and recordings is an evolving process that can take a bit of time and energy to get right, but it's worth dedicating time to it because it can make the quality of your content sound so much better without you having to spend a dime. 
So that's everything for today. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any suggestions on other topics relating to streaming on Twitch or making gaming videos for YouTube that you'd like me to talk about, then please leave a comment with the suggestion down below or jump on over to our live stream on twitch.tv slash thebeardguys every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday and ask me there. What are you doing? We did it! We did it! The win with the shotty! 10 kills, Orm shotgun, last kill with the shotgun.